right there at 8K. There he is. The man, yep. the myth, the legend. Kevin Nah. Walks in from 30 feet. Let's go, Kevin Nah. Yeah, you know, Kevin Nah and, uh, you know, Horschel are, are both going to be in my build. So, you know, I'm giving you guys my lineup. Uh, Kevin Nah will be in it this week. Uh, I think he fits perfectly with every golf course. This one specifically probably better than others and uh he fits perfectly into my lineup so um i'm gonna enjoy the the 12 dollars of winnings that i get this week and uh you know it's gonna be exciting people are agreeing with yeah he's at he's at 12 percent ownership yeah i actually you're not gonna hear me say this very often but i actually do like the way that kevin now sets up this week for this golf course <laughs> It pains me to say it a little bit, but yeah, it's it's tough to argue. He's a great wedge player, hits it straight. He's got to take advantage of these tracks where he can actually compete, and this is one of them. Yeah, like, hey, I'm looking forward to uh, Kevin Na uh, first place finish. Uh, I think it's uh, he has he possesses more win equity, and it's not a lot, but more win equity this week. Than probably any other week in the year. So this this is going to be one of those those high weeks for him. So uh, I think he knows that this is his opportunity to maybe win a tournament. Um, it's not uh, altogether that different than on when uh, a couple weeks ago when he you know was in Orlando. He's like this is my hometown basically. Um, I need to show out, and he had a great performance. And I think Kevin Na realizes this is a a golden opportunity for him. And uh, you know I think I, 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 he's definitely in my line. Sweet. Do it up. Do you just crack a beer? Uh, I did. <laughs> Very nice. I love that sound. I can hear that from a mile away. Oh, All right. So, so yeah. a guy that kind of piqued my interest and in not because of really anything particular, uh, but his price point, it seems like Brant Snedeker is, is – um, below 8000 seems to be quite a discount for a guy who can put it all together on a course. Yeah, for sure. I didn't. I didn't even realize until I started to do some research this week that he finished 16th last week at the PGA. Mm-hmm. Like that course did not suit him at all. Much like Ches Reeve, they're both kind of short hitters, hit a lot of fairways and greens. Um, but Snads can get it going on the greens too. When he's when he's sticking it close, he can make some birds. It's hard not to like him. I think the course sets up a lot better for him than most, and he's shown some good form in flashes here. Um, this season so yeah at that price when you're looking when you're kind of dying for some value i'm all over snedeker absolutely yeah i just kind of jumped off the page one of the things i like to do is just just flip through the field and just get a feel for names where i recognize them and see where they're at and it just seems strange for me to see a guy like snedeker under 8k in this field 100 Mm percent it's uh it's a value that i'm absolutely looking forward to taking that's for sure all right, well, that kicks off the top of the 7,900 range. Um, some interesting names here. Um, I mean, Graham McDowell's a guy who uh, usually hangs around that kind of top 25 every now and then. Um, a guy like Pat Perez has had a pretty hot season at 7,700. Um, uh, Sung J.M., a guy they would be like to tout but never seem to be on him in the right moments at 77. Um, what are you thinking of these uh, top half of the 7,000s? Yeah, other than other than Brandt, I I don't mind McDowell. Um, he's not usually a guy that I love playing because he just doesn't make that many birdies. But he he showed really well at the PGA last week, uh, finishing top thirty and shooting seventy on Sunday, which is one of the best rounds on the course that day. Um, so I I don't know. I'll probably have a sprinkle of McDowell depending on what his ownership is. I might just match it. I think Ty Hatton um, is intriguing just because his his overall pedigree kind of outweighs his price in this field. Um, I'm not on Perez or Sungjae, but I do like some Siwoo Kim. I think Siwoo, this type of course, even though he's played like crap the last two events he's played in, um, this type of course fits him very well. When he gets his irons going, that's kind of his strength. And it's tough to ignore Danny Berger. Um, he played really well the first three rounds at the PGA, or first two rounds, I should say, at the PGA, and he's shown some flashes. Um, his approach game has been looking good, and it doesn't matter that he hits a short here because – it sets up for the shorter hitters. What do you, like you think of uh, Charlie Hoffman? Um, five for five and cuts made. Um, one top yeah. 10, one top 20. Yeah, I was just looking at Charlie. Charlie's one of my favorite guys on tour, not just because of 
the fact that he's a good player, but heard some great stories from Charlie's old mini tour days. Pretty classic, but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't mind Charlie at all. I think he's uh, he's a very good fit for the course. It's the kind of course that he that he kind of finds his form on. So I'm absolutely in on Mr. Hoffman this week as well. Plus, he's probably got the biggest forehead on the tour. That's for sure, man. I remember watching him at the Buick in, in uh, Michigan several years back, and he had like this this blonde like mullet, which was absolutely awesome. And I uh, had the sunglasses rocking, the hat on. He just looked like a rock star out there. Didn't play like a rock star, but he looked sweet. And that's pretty much half the battle. So, Any uh, any ownership news on Byung-Hun on? He's had some injury issues recently, and he's looked horrible not finishing in the top hundred the last three events but it should be a good course fit for him what's the ownership looking like mark super low uh 11 uh, percent. yeah i was actually surprised to see that he's playing this week and i'm surprised he's that highly owned as far as his projections go i'll probably be off him if he's 11 percent. but who are you liking in your in your models there in kind of the top half of the 7k range uh, Charlie Hoffman's the one that popped out for me mm-hmm. and, uh, and, uh, Snedeker. Those are the two that really popped for me. Yeah. I think Hoffman and Sneds are kind of the no brainers up there in the top half. And then there's a few guys you could, you could sprinkle with them. Like Brandon Grace, if you're talking about scrolling through prices is danger and seeing somebody who stands out, Brandon Grace at 7,500. Like I know he hasn't played great in the States here recently, but. Would anyone be shocked to see him in the top 20 at the end of the week at 7,500? That's somebody I'm willing to take a chance on for sure. And you got to go. What do you think? Barn, our, right? It's the freaking barn ride. What was that, Chris? Yeah. No, I was going to say, what do you think uh, of I didn't say uh, Mr. T Way? Um, he's had some course success here. Who was that? I'm sorry. You broke up uh, real quick. Kevin T Way. Real quick, guys. Before. Real, real quick, before you answer that, it's a time imperative uh, situation that I have to inform Danger of. Um, apparently, uh, there was some rain in Anaheim. The field, the, there are pictures of the field. Uh, there are water piles on the field. Uh, they have just delayed the game, the start, uh, certainly waiting for it to dry out. They don't have a lot of good, uh, drainage there. There is a possibility uh, the decking is postponed and you would need to swap off your twins players to uh, probably Atlanta or San Francisco at this point. So if that is something that you're interested in and not, uh, not taking the risk of playing those guys, you would have to uh, probably do that, you know, uh, with due haste. And yes. uh, with, with that, uh, I'll allow you to analyze one, Mr. Tway. Wasn't that a Rammstein song? Do haste. <laughs> uh, I remember yeah. this. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Reminds me of some raves back in the day. The fire but yeah. Sadistic fire starter. Yeah. <laughs> totally different all band, those, man. I know, but all those songs are like that that genre. I just remember, uh, you know, being in the I don't know, late middle school or early high school, and just like jamming on that stuff. Yeah, drop some acid and have a good time. Yeah. All right. I'm going to go switch some lineups and uh, pause the mic here on my end for a while. So take it away, guys. <laughs> Sounds good. All right. Kevin Tway. Yeah. Not not a huge fan of Tway. It actually surprises me that he's had history, uh, solid course history here, because he's not, doesn't seem to be a great fit for this golf course. So um, I will let the others jump on Mr. Tway. He's a guy that I like on certain golf courses, just not just not here. Um, and what about the barn rat? Does the barn rat fit to this at all? I don't actually like the barn rat here. I mean, he he can make a lot of birdies when he gets going, but he's uh, he gains so many strokes on the putting green at the Byron Nelson. Um, had a couple of good rounds of the PGA, which was nice to see. Still a big fan. Always going to be a big fan of the barn rat, but um, just not this week. There's a few guys just below him that I like a lot better. Um, right below him, actually. Walker and Knox, I, I like both. I like Jimmy Walker in particular. Um, he finished top 25 of the PGA last week, played really solidly, and uh, that's probably the best he's played in a long time on a course like that. That caught my attention, so I'm definitely willing to willing to throw some shares of Mr. Walker in this week. 
Russell Knox is just a straight yeah, hitter. Russell, yeah, yeah I was going to say, Russell Knox popped on my model a little bit. Yeah, um, I don't have his course history pulled up in front of me, but it's just he's a very straight hitter. He hits a lot of greens when his game is on. Not a great short game around the greens, but he's a good putter when he's rolling. So he's a guy I'm willing to take uh, a chance. There's certain uh-huh. courses he can. I'd say he's played. Yeah, he's played three of the last five years, and all three he finished twenty, twenty one, and twenty four. Okay, that's solid uh-huh. enough for. Me. Yeah, I'll jump on Russell for sure. Not loving any of these guys just below there. Like, Duffner showed a little bit of flash at, uh, what was it, Wells Fargo a few weeks ago um, with that crazy 63, I think he shot on Friday. But I don't know. I'm uh-huh. I'm not jumping uh-huh. back on that. I mean, Johnny Vegas kind of hits it crooked. Oh, it's just God. not hits off the course. I think the Vegas train is kind of – that's going to be off the rails for a little bit here. We can maybe jump back on when we get to like the Canadian Open after the British. Buddy, but he missed the cut at like plus nine or something like that. Oh, oh my god! Just last week, he was awful. Uh, Johnny Vegas is uh, going to have a, a wonderful week. Actually, I'm I'm all in on Johnny Vegas. I am all in on Barmer Rat. I am just going crazy uh, with these degenerate guys. You know, Kevin Na, Vegas, Barn Rat, uh, you know, it's uh, – hey, I might I might actually have five guys that missed the cut and the win. We'll see how that plays out. <laughs> that uh, would be very on brand for you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> any any love for Furyk at all? No, not for me. I mean, it's a, <clears throat> it's a better course setup for him. I didn't expect him to do anything at the PGA, but um, – he didn't do much at the Heritage a few weeks ago either, and that that course should set him up, set up perfectly for him. So I don't know. I think Chris said it earlier. I think we're off the Fiorik train for a while here. We rode it as long as we could, and Chris, I got to give you credit on that one. You were the first one to get on, but we are off for the time being. Yeah, yeah you really- know what? But 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 <laughs> you almost have to think too in perspective. One shot kind of changes our whole perspective on him. Like if he made the cut last week and then had a good Saturday, Sunday, uh, do we look at him differently? Uh, it, it's not like uh, he went out and had a Johnny Vegas first two day, uh, two days. He, he, he played, you know, uh, average, uh, essentially. If you miss the cut by one, you, you basically played average to the field. Um, so, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I, do you like him over Vegas or – uh, would you play Vegas over him? It sounds like you probably feel like this is a better fit for, for Furyk. And, you know, mm-hmm. given my rationale and reasoning, I, I hope I sold you on him and uh, you play him and he doesn't play very well. You know, it's not even it's not even as much the PGA performance. It's the heritage back in mid-April when that course, it's a, it's a straight hitters course. A lot of the fairways run out, so a lot of the guys can't hit drivers where he can and he still missed the cut by several strokes and shot 70-76, like... He made four birdies over two rounds at a course that should fit him to a tee at 9,400. Now he's down here at 73 trying to bait us in. I'm just not taking the bait. Um, if I had to pick one or the other, I would take Furyk. I think he's got a lot higher probability of making the cut. I just don't see this week. Anyway, I just don't see the upside for him. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd, I would rather take a few of the guys we've talked about up there. And, you know, Russell Knox, Jimmy Walker. Brandon Grace, if you're going strictly on pedigree and and uh, kind of world ranking at relative to price, I would I would much rather take a chance on him than I would down there at Furyk at 73. <clears throat> I do like a couple other guys here in the low sevens. Um, Bud Colley got to jump back on the Bud train. I think this is a course he could definitely pop. Um, been waiting for this guy for a while, but I think it's the week where Joaquin Neiman could could make some noise and finish, you know, top twenty, top twenty five pretty easily. He's down at seventy one hundred. Um, my boy Brian Stewart from Jackson, Michigan, at seventy one hundred, has been playing some very steady golf. Um, before the before the Byron Nelson had two straight top twenties, so or and three out of four, so I'm hoping he'll jump back on that on that form. Aaron Badley get any love and ownership, Mark? What's Bad's looking like? I'm sorry, who? Aaron Badley. I know I'm Aaron throwing a Badley. shot. No, no, I sorry, I was looking at something else. 
Uh, badly, badly.